Hello and welcome back to SnowRunner, y'all. And in this video, we're gonna be checking out a brand new mod called the First Gen K5 Series Collection. Now, just to go ahead and clarify, because I'm sure some people are going to say um, the GMC logos make this not a console mod. Don't worry about that. The GMC logos are just not going to be available on the console version. However, the PC version does have them. Now, in this video, if you do wanna skip ahead to the driving, feel free to do that, of course. However, we're going to be spending quite a bit of time in the garage, just kind of going over all of the different options because there are a lot. There are a massive, massive amount of options, especially if you get the kind of extra add-on mod that goes with it. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get this thing into the garage and see what kind of customization options it has because it's it's genuinely ridiculous. Now, if you do prefer the more vanilla spec engines, um, you do have an option for that. You can go with the quote unquote level zero, um, which as you basically see on all of John John Hot Rod's mods, it's based on the vanilla F750 tune. So if you're looking for that like super vanilla game style experience, that is gonna be the option for you. Then you have the level one stock-ish. You have the level one trail rider. Then you have the level two trail runner, level three red line. And then of course your two um, tow and haul tunes. Now, as far as, as far as engines, because we're building this kind of as more of a trail rider focused build, we're going to go with the trail runner, I think. And now in terms of gearboxes, again, you do have the option to go for the vanilla spec, but we're not going to this time. We're going to go with the trail runner transmission as well. And then in terms of suspension, there's basically everything across the board. I mean, you have suspension specs for 35s, 38s, 42s, 46s. There are so many options in here and you can pretty much dial them into, honestly, behave however you want. And honestly, once you get down to about the, uh, I would say down to about the trail scout, you're pretty much going to be all the way wrapped back around in terms of suspension dynamics and setup and stuff like that. And then of course you also have the vintage spec. Although I will say warning, if you're going to run the vintage spec, it's extremely stiff because it's kind of meant to almost simulate the behavior of a old school um, spring over axle, leaf spring style lift. Obviously this one has coilovers and it's fully coilover converted, but the behavior of that suspension type is going to more closely reflect that of, um, essentially big old leaf springs. So let's go ahead and grab some, hold on. Guess who forgot, um, guess who forgot to pick a suspension because I don't want the stockish. It's a fine suspension, but it's not what we're going to go for. So I want to go for the stage three trail crawler because the stage three is a little bit lower center of gravity than the stage four. You have your standard John John hot rod tire selection. However, really at the end of the day, I mean, again, you can set this up however you would like from tire style to tire grip levels, stockish, red line, cheater tires, all of that good stuff all the way across the board, even going all the way down into, wow, excuse me, um, down into specifically, you have these gigantic um, vintage style swampers. And of course, for those of you that are venturing into the snow and ice, you have massive spiked tires if you do want to go that route as well. Although I think for our adventure today, we're probably going to go with a set of, mm, I think, I think the, the option for us here is going to be, if I can find them, the 42 inch Redline spec Baja Runner Pro X wide. That's a absolute mouthful for tires, but don't worry about it. It's fine. So let's go ahead and just leave the trail runner winch. We'll leave the diff lock, of course. And now this is where it once again gets into a lot more, a lot more detail. I mean, you could go on and on <laughs> and on and on and on and on and on from all of these different options in trim, molding, wood grain. There's really like, there's honestly almost no limit to the amount of stuff you can put on these trucks. 
And honestly, it all comes down to what you like. It all comes down to what you personally, oh my God, folding rear seats. You have got to be kidding me. You have got to be kidding me. Okay, so not only is there like just random stuff in the back, aka the chunk in the trunk, um, this literally moves around with like, at least according to um, according to the description, it will slide around based on the game physics. That is so insane. That is so insane. Oh my God. So wait a second. So you can delete the rear seat and also put like a bunch of gear in the back as well. Oh, hold on. Hold on. This is getting... This is getting a lot more interesting than I originally thought it was going to be. Okay, hold on. Hold on. There's a lot more going on here. So... Mm, I think we'll throw the modern stereo in it. And then we will throw probably kind of like a modern style, you know, aftermarket racing wheel. Oh my God. And now of course you have the absolutely near endless bumper customization, which I mean, again, if you want customization freedom, you're pretty much, you're pretty much wide open here. There's, there's absolutely nothing that it doesn't let you do. Oh, Okay. Yeah, that's a little bit more gnarly than the tire carrier we had before. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab... Well, to be honest, the tailgate paneling is not going to matter with that gigantic tire carrier right there. You could even do like a mega duty drop hitch if you wanted to. And then, of course, if you do want to change out the roof style or just, you know, delete the roof entirely up to you. You know, I actually may just delete it. I may just delete it and leave it there. Or we could just, <laughs> we could put the roof rack on without the roof, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> you do also have a couple of different exhaust options ranging from full exhaust with default smoke or light smoke. And then of course a shorty exhaust as well. But I think we're going to go with the full exhaust on default smoke. And then let's see, of course you can select whatever front grill, front fascia you would like, different color um, Chevy logos. It's it's so in depth. It is so incredibly in depth. I think, I think what I'll do is I'll do the 69 to 70 Chevrolet front grill. And then of course, oh my God, you have like multiple, different cage setups. You have a half cage. You have a full cage. You have a crawler X cage, which is probably going to be your, I would imagine your, your most, um, your most crawler centric. Although you don't necessarily have to do that. It's just kind of up to you. I do love how the seventies chrome cage is like padded as if that's going to as if that's going to do anything, like in an accident, like this is, you would not survive. <laughs> you just wouldn't survive. Mm. I'm still so split. I'm still so split on what I actually want to put in this thing. I tell you what, mm. I think we'll do classic full. Oh, that actually looks really good. And then let's see, damage control max. And then we'll just throw the max goodies in there as well. And in terms of wheel selection, I mean, again, all entirely up to you. Hmm. Oh, there's so many good options. There are so many good options. I think this time I'm going to go with these, um, the Raceline Monster Beadlocks. There are so many options that I, you could go... You could go everything from showroom fresh to just pulled it out of a barn after 30 years. It's in, again, it's entirely up to you. That's one of the biggest things that I love about all of John John Hot Rods mods is the fact that literally 
there is no type of customization that is left on the table here. It's like every single style for basically every single person is available. Like you can just do it. I love how when we start scrolling, it's just like, it just doesn't end. I mean, I guess it ends eventually, but let's go ahead and throw, I'm thinking, I actually saw something I really liked and it's gonna be this like really weathered red. And then we'll go ahead and also throw, where's beans? There's beans. And now it's time to take this thing for a proper drive. It's just so comfortable. And I don't necessarily, obviously I'm not physically in it, but it's such a comfortable driving experience. Like you get the vibe that it could just literally do this all day. Up and over it goes, come on. Oh, it just keeps that momentum. And the center of gravity is so well balanced. Real talk though, I am so incredibly glad that we did not go with the highest suspension option because that would have been catastrophically bad for us. Well, maybe not, maybe not catastrophically bad. Maybe that's a little bit over the top to say, but it would have been a lot more difficult to manage in terms of like undulating terrain. Oh, come on. Oh, you've got this. Just make my way up and over. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> this thing, this thing absolutely shreds and it shreds up pretty much whatever you want it to. I almost want to turn up the difficulty a little bit. I want to go somewhere that is a little bit more challenging, a little bit more, not necessarily like challenging in terms of, ooh, oh, easy, come on. Come on. Give it some wheel speed. I love how it just made it all the way up here and just, it never complained. Like not even once did this thing complain at all, at all. So we're gonna find some obstacles that are a little bit gnarlier than those. Although I don't think we're gonna find them by going downhill. Hmm. Oh, actually, oh, this is proper steep though. This is actually ridiculously steep. I mean, going up that would probably be a decent enough challenge, but I'm looking for more rocks in, in general. Okay, maybe we could have done a better job of that. <laughs> maybe we could have done a much better job of that. Does this? Oh, it does. It does loop back up. Okay. It's got just enough flex to be super capable but not necessarily so much that it feels kind of outside the scope of realism. Oh, there you go. That's actually a really good look at the amount of flex this thing does actually have. Imagine getting like a fleet of four of these together with your friends and going for like a multiplayer trail ride. The beauty of that is that this thing has so much customization that none of your rigs would end up the same. It 
It is so freaking capable. All right, let's give it some wheel speed. Easy. I'm honestly shocked that it let me bump it into high like that. Come on. No! And we're good. Oh no. Oh no. I've never done that climb from that direction before. And that was actually really sketchy. Like, although like it was really sketchy in a good way because I literally said a couple of minutes ago that that's what I was looking for. So yeah, I would absolutely recommend coming to this map with this thing. And not even this map in like in general. I mean, I would, but this trail in particular is so good. I've gotta also I've gotta also keep an eye on like the time because I could just I could just keep driving this thing. I could go on and on and on and then look over and probably have been going for like I don't know, like a half an hour. So with that being said and done, y'all, let me know your thoughts and opinions on this rig in the comments down below. And if you're new around here and you would like to see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn those notifications on. And I will see y'all next time.